Welcome back to the tangent. We're here again with our buddies Devin. Hey yo. Tim. Hi, how you doing? Producer Harrison. Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> and of course me, James. Today we're going to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart because I loved watching them when I got home from school and waking up early on Saturday mornings to watch them. We're going to talk about cartoons. Hell yeah. Cartoons are always fun, regardless of how old you are. Because I think I still watch cartoons into my 20s on Saturday morning. I had a really awesome yeah. job that I worked overnight, and I'd work overnight Friday night, and I'd stay up until like noon watching cartoons on Saturday morning before I well, went to I sleep. Well, I know when, uh, whenever Marshall would have like cartoons in the morning on Saturdays, he'd record them, and then I'd watch them with him later that day. Right, so right. I mean, you know, there was a lot of good... Specifically like Pokemon and stuff. Yeah, a lot of good cartoons. Um, I think I'm going to start with... Uh, um, an older version of the X-Men. Yeah. The uncanny X-Men. I think we should kind of, since, like, you're the oldest in the room, like, I feel like... Thanks, Devin. Starting with you would be the best. That way we can kind of go in, in a chronological well, order. Yeah, considering that you're ancient, you can talk about, you know... Yeah. The, old, the, the good like, cartoons? Like, you know, about, back when cartoons were awesome? Yeah. <laughs> Pie Pie. 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 <laughs> Tell us about the creation of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. <laughs> the, the original Mickey Mouse. <laughs> well, okay, so if we really want to go back to then, I mean, really, truthfully, cartoons I remember watching on Saturday mornings were, like, He-Man, G.I. Joe, Transformers. I mean, there was even one, GoBots. Mm -hmm. It was kind but, of a Transformers but, knockoff, but right. Ser hey, seriously, you, you can't you can't attention. really you can't really just ignore like the Looney Tunes and all that stuff. Oh, absolutely not. You're all right. You're stuff. absolutely right. I used to watch a lot of that when I was a kid because that's the stuff my mom grew up with. I yeah, used to watch Looney a lot Tunes, of, like, Pinky Looney, Tunes, the Brain. Looney Tunes, Tom and Jerry. Yeah, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. All yeah. All the Hanna Barbera stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, all of it. I mean, Popeye was one of my all time favorites. Watching oh, yeah. anything old school. When Popeye. I was when I was a little yeah. kid, like. Popeye was the man. Yeah, and I used to he, he almost Popeye he too. almost convinced me to eat spinach. I don't think Popeye, almost. <laughs> I, I still I, whenever I look at spinach, man, it just makes me gag. Man, true. I love spinach it, though. It, but it it's not I like fresh. I like fresh spinach, not cooked spinach. I'm okay with yeah. That's all good, you like man. Cooked spinach? Not really. I mean, look at I'll this. eat it if it's we're, mixed into something we're else. Like five minutes in, we're already we're already <laughs> talking about food. <laughs> That was our, that was our five minute intro into food. No, yeah, anyway. Today we're talking about spinach. Is it better cooked or not cooked? <laughs> Are you getting enough greens in your diet? <laughs> anyway, this podcast but is I mean, by I, I did a. I, I, I remember this, this waking podcast up, is sponsored by Green Giant. It's, I remember. <laughs> Green Giant. Home. <laughs> Holy cow, where is this thing going? <laughs> we don't even know what this subject is anymore today. We're, We're just not actually sponsored it. by Green Giant, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. Anyway, <laughs> back to topic at hand. So I do remember waking up on Saturday mornings and gathering all my toys of the cartoons that were on and oh, yeah. playing with them while, while watching the cartoons. Like, I was really big into He-Man. Mm. Don't know why, if I watch it now, I laugh. Because it's like, man, this is horrible. It, it is, it is horrible. But you know, at the at the same time, He Man was that that sort of perfect assembly of all the things that any any boy at the time in their in their proper age range would just love. You know, it's like dude with big muscle and a sword, and he fought a dude with a skull for a face, and he had a big cat that he rode around. Oh yeah, the cat. Something, oh something man, something I noticed. Uh, <laughs> Nostalgia, nostalgia yeah. has no basis of standard. So, True. like, you can enjoy anything because of nostalgia if you enjoyed it, you know, before you had standards. It's true. True, true. If, if, you are, if you are prone to and nostalgia, the, this, is, this is true. And right. the one thing that always kills me about the older cartoons that I used to watch, um, He-Man, G.I. Joe, Transformers, at the end of the freaking episode, they always did that, here's your lesson for today. Oh, and then yeah. G.I. Joe's... It's like, knowing is half the battle. I mean, it's just stuff they were trying to teach you a lesson within these cartoons. Now, I do get it. They still do that. Oh, yeah. Now some of the younger the whole, kids. Yeah, the now younger kids. Now they make kids. the whole show about learning some stuff. Right. Well, here, here's, here's the thing is, you already had shows where the entire show was about learning stuff. And then they also threw a lesson at the end. Can, can no one remember Captain Planet? Like Captain <laughs> Planet. I can't remember things that were there before I was there and I've never seen. 
Look, you've never seen Captain never Planet. Seen Captain. So oh Captain, my God, you I know of it. it. I Captain, know of Captain it. Captain Planet. It is. Captain Planet was propaganda for children. Oh yeah. It was, <laughs> it was all about yeah. the environment. It was, it was all about, about the environment. They were trying it's to, not a bad thing. No, it's not. No. I mean, okay. Here, here's the thing. It, they they were very vague. So <laughs> so it is it is sort of an issue because like it, all the bad guys were just needlessly wasteful. Like that that's what that's what their that's what their crimes were. Like I remember the intro is just is just literally like one of the bad guys <laughs> is doing nothing but printing an excessive amount of copies off of a, like a copy machine. Oh no. <laughs> the villainy. <laughs> you know, they're just paper flying everywhere and like, and like the heroes fly in and like and like stop them and it's just like Okay, look, I get it. Like, and it was so even, bad they couldn't get them to stop pressing a button, so they had to put their rings together and make super yeah, Captain, Captain Planet. Planet. Captain you know, Planet. It, it, I, I get it. You know, you shouldn't waste paper, but I mean, you can recycle that crap. I mean, come on down. <laughs> and like, anytime they talked about toxic waste, it was just like this sludge that served no purpose, and these guys were just manufacturing it. <laughs> it's, it's like, they, they weren't doing things that and had toxic waste as like a waste product. They were manufacturing toxic waste to literally just start dumping it places because they were bad guys. <laughs> oh yeah, it was it was pretty. I mean, but the thing is, is they. They were trying to. They were trying to teach kids that the environment is important. Yeah. So right. they were just. They always did some kind Toxic of environmental thing, right. like cutting down of the rainforests and dumping and was, toxic was, waste. I mean, it was like kinda, it, was kinda, it was kind of like a weird Power Ranger ripoff. But like instead of Zordon, you had like actual Gaia. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gaia was like yeah, Mother the Mother and Earth or whatever. Like, like even even in the show, Mati, the guy whose whose power was heart. Oh God. He, he became he a joke annoyed. in the show itself. Like, I mean, they they went to like some weird universe where they all got enhanced powers. So he had like the the guy with the fire had like this extreme fire launcher, and and you know like the chick with wind had like this giant wind launcher thing. And he you know Matisse just like, what about me and my power of heart? And the guy just like rips open his own chest and hands him his heart. He's like, you can have this, I guess. And he's like, <laughs> no. I'm good with this. This is fine. It's like, <laughs> well, I mean, and he was a joke because everybody had epic powers because they were yeah. all like earth and fire and wind and water. So yeah. they had yeah, control yeah, with their rings of those elements. Right. And then there's old good old Mati that was just like, oh, I have the power of heart. And, and I was like, is, why bring a fifth person into a, fi- a four the, element the, system? The, Come the, on. The thing is, Mati's actual power was to like communicate with animals. And he could, like, convince him to do things. If he wanted to go be a bad guy, he'd be the most fat-ass of the bad guys. Oh, yeah, because yeah. he could control all the animals. Be but because like, he was a nice guy, shark. his power was useless. Pretty much. But, I mean, really, I don't know. I mean, car- cartoons on Saturday mornings were always one of those things I loved getting up. Because my dad would make breakfast. Yeah. Yeah, we'd sit we'd sit in front of the TV and watch cartoons while we had our breakfast and then get us some some good eggs and, and then biscuits by, and by the time yeah, all the cartoons know. by all the, the by the time all the cartoons were over, we were gone. We'd leave. We'd go outside yeah, and hang go out for out, the rest of the day. Go outside or, you know, for me um like around the time that I was watching my most amount of Saturday morning cartoons, you had like uh I mean, the, the, Yu-Gi-Oh, which is technically like an anime. Pokemon, technically an anime, but like I feel, I feel like shows like that kind of cross over. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Especially Yu-Gi-Oh is kind of a crossover anime, actual cartoon. But honestly, at that point, the two big deal shows for uh, me and my brother, who's like eight years older than me, was uh, X-Men Evolution. And, X-Men Evolution and, was awesome. And Mucha Lucha. Oh, which, <laughs> or, or Shaolin the Showdown. Other, oh, Shaolin Showdown that. was good too. But you know so what also like, was really good was really weird was the Jackie Chan. Yeah, I was oh, watching, Jackie did you, Chan. Did you watch the Jackie Chan? Adventures? Oh my gosh, but those yeah, were weirdly after, good. After <laughs> yeah. like so, they, they, they took they took the the end of episode lessons to an extreme by actually bringing Jackie Chan on to say oh, yeah, crap for real. <laughs> but it always ended with X Men Evolution. That was the last cartoon that they showed, and like so. Me and my brother were big into, like, playing with our action figures and making stories and stuff like that. And so, like, that would always kind of segue into, like, all right, we saw some stuff go down in X-Men Evolution. Now let's go, like, make our own kind of version or do some stuff, you know. Like, I even had, like, an Apocalypse action figure, or my brother did, that it became mine. But, like, you know, we had all X-Men, all, like, you know, wrestling action figures and stuff, and we just made, like... 
And, you know, that was very largely inspired by Saturday morning cartoons. Right. Because that's how we would spend, you know... For me, that's kind of how it felt. It was like the, the cartoons were like fuel to the fire that, that we were building with our... Right, you know, and that's... that's other the, imaginative stuff. And that's really... It's really funny because, like... If you really think about it, a lot of the toy sales were driven by oh, cartoons, yeah. or cartoons were driven by toys. Like, it, and it went both ways. Well, there were was, some shows that were written first as a as a cartoon, and then you sold the toys. There were some toys that were made first, and then they wrote a cartoon because of because the, of the it. success. Well, of there, those there, toys. Are, there are yeah. there are legitimate instances. Of some of my favorite shows, like Young Justice, Ooh, that oh, were yeah, that was that, good. that were that were canceled, not because the show didn't do well, because the show did do well. Young Justice did extremely well in the ratings; it won awards. The problem was it didn't have good merchandise sales. That's why it got canceled. Right. I mean, because they can only do so much off of the ad revenue that they get off of it. Yeah, the yeah. ad revenue is good, but I mean. Ad revenue, the biggest that's, ad that's revenue. Not, that's not stuff where they is, plan to make their money. Right. Oh, well, yeah. the biggest thing about ad revenue is when adults can see an ad. Because then they're going to buy them because kids don't have the money to buy it. they got to convince their parents to buy it. So ad revenue only goes so far when it comes to a Saturday well, that, morning that's, cartoon. That's, yeah, the, that's, like, the, that's kind of the reason why a lot of the ads were focused toward kids. They were focused on. Making kids Convincing want kids. to try and ask their parents yeah, exactly. for this thing. Right, and that's what I'm saying is like, but not... That's how that's how today you get that, that weird Play-Doh unicorn that poops. Yeah, we're not going to go... Because there. it doesn't make any sense. It just, someone figured out how to advertise that to a child. Are you right. about My Little Pony? No, no. There, there's, a, there's this Play-Doh thing that it, it's a unicorn and you can like pull her hair and when you pull her hair and you, and you pull it back down, her eyes cross and she... Poops out a, a play doh Sunday. It's weird. Nice. All right. That sounds. Yeah, and the a thing is, what sexual. kills me is that's a real thing. It's a real thing, and I saw it on the news. That's how I first I'm first sure. heard about it. You saw it on the news? I saw it on the news because it was it was uh, 2019's biggest <coughs> biggest Christmas gift. No kidding. It was it was 2019's I mean, Tickle Me Elmo. And I was like, Are you freaking kidding me? You pull her oh hair man. and she poops ice cream. Tickle Me Elmo. Oh was god. Good crap. So I mean. Those were my Saturday morning cartoons. Now, here's the thing: is, is that I was listening, I was listening, watching Saturday morning cartoons all the way up through through my twenties. Like I said, I mean, I did watch Yu Gi Oh and Jackie Chan and all that stuff. I mean, still to this day, I still watch some of the cartoons that are on on like Netflix or yeah, you know, yeah. like I like a couple of those cartoons that they've added. Like Voltron for me was an old. Yeah. Old cartoon for me, like I like the original Voltron, but Voltron. Well, you, you want to talk about like the te- new technically anime Voltron would kind of fall into yeah, that that's category. True. It, it, See, the newer Voltron it, falls into the anime category, yeah. but the you, old the old Voltron did technically as well. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, because it fell in with like Robotech and and all yeah. some of them old old anime. But I mean, that's the kind of stuff I watched, and I really liked it. So when the new Voltron came out, of course I'm going to check it out. And man, I was hooked. Yeah. So yeah, I still watch some cartoons. Yeah, there's been... But it, it's it's interesting to see sort of like the evolution of cartoons. Because you have, like we were talking about earlier, like the Looney Tunes and the Hanna-Barbera stuff. Right. Where it's just, it's self-contained, single story sort of things where... The next time you see it, you do, you just act as though none of that happened before. Right. right. Yeah. Like um, there's no continuation in the right. like Tom there's and Jerry. No, there's no there's no continuity. The Roadrunner. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Roadrunner is always the Coyote always loses, but at the end of the show, you're like, okay, he's still lost. But then it's, you get the next one. It's a completely different setup. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Though he falls off the cliff you, every episode. When, he's when, still when, alive. when while E Coyote <laughs> introduces himself as super genius, you have to just assume that everything you've seen before hasn't happened. And you have right. to just assume that he is a super genius, and right. he's being foiled by this stupid right. bird. <laughs> by this dumb bird. It's like the same day being played with different actions. Right. Like, you know. Right. Um, but and, I mean, then, and then you move into some of the more continuity-ish sort of stories, um, like X-Men and Spider-Man. And then you, you hit the uh-huh. really epic ones like Batman the Animated Series and Gargoyles. Oh. You know, that's where well, merchandise comes. And then here's the thing: is like a lot of the became a thing, right? Yeah. A lot of the older cartoons were single episode one and dones, like 
Scooby Doo, they would solve their case before the end of the episode. There right. was no like continuation. Like now, a lot of the you, cartoons you didn't get continuations in those until like they started coming out with like the movies, yeah. the movies, the, or, the, the, the or if they had a special the guest, the 90s. Yeah. if they had the special yeah. guest, like you when the Harley Batman Globe and tro- Robin, Batman, episode. the old school yeah. Batman There's and like Robin, two Batman and Robin episodes, yeah. yeah. And the thing awesome. is, the second the second time they meet them, they remember each other. That's when you start getting like continuity Continu- from episodes yeah. to episode, right? Well, and then nowadays these cartoons are there's like. And, I, and I'm going to throw it more into the anime style because it runs like one at the end of every episode you're not finishing off a story it's just continuing the same story yeah, throughout yeah, a whole exactly. almost a whole season sometimes two yeah. seasons which is something that anime has done big time yeah so from the beginning basically I mean and look at any of the big anime especially back in the day you can't you can't ignore like we can't we can't really separate cartoons from anime because the further back yeah. you go the worse trying to separate them gets. Yeah. So, like, when, when you start getting into, like, Speed Racer. Speed Racer is undeniably an anime. But when we were kids, we viewed it as a cartoon because it was played with all the other cartoons. Right. I thought, wasn't Speed Racer on, like, MTV or something? It, it technically is an anime. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah it definitely. Well, it, it got played a lot on, you know... Uh, especially on, like, when, like, Cartoon Network first started up and, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, okay. Um, but, you know, you get... You get <laughs> Weird crossover stuff like that, or like uh, when I was a kid, I love I love the Ultraman cartoons, oh, which are right. also undeniably Wait, anime. anime. Cartoon Ultraman had a cartoon. Ultraman oh, has yeah. had several several. I thought anime. they were the live action type stuff. Like they have they have several they, of those as well. Yes, those. interesting. And for for a long time, Ultraman was the longest running TV program ever because it it ran from you know like 1952 until like. 2015 or 2016. Yeah, because I just, all I can remember Ultraman stuff was the the and was that was the that was Power live, Ranger style. That was a live action, action show. Yeah, that yeah. was a live action show. That was the longest running one for a long time. Um, but they had at least three cartoons, but uh, only one of them got kind of kind of you know big over here, and that was the one that I watched. Gotcha. Um, but all the Ultramen are different people, so you have, yeah, it's it's weird because. They yeah. all have different origin names, and they're they're all different people technically that inhabit human people, and that's how they become Ultramen. It's weird. Just, but, that's the one with the little pill thing, right? No. Wait. What? So. In, they usually uh, have a pendant. pendant or a pendant yeah. or something. So they usually um, have something. Yeah. In uh, the book of uh, Ready, Ready, Ready Player One, he gets this Ultraman pill. That, yeah, he can use... He uses it and turns into Ultraman, so, like, he swallows it, so it's a... Because, weren't they... Couldn't they only stay as Ultraman for so long? It depends on which Ultraman it is. Yeah. Okay. Because the different Ultraman had slightly different powers. Gotcha. So, some of them were based on, like, like if they got beat up too much, they would start to lose their power. Some of them were if they use their powers too much, like their energy weapons, and some of them were time based. So it would depend on which Ultraman you were talking about. I think the one in Ready Player One is just time based. I think yeah, it was time based. Yeah, he, he wrecks, all... wrecks for like five minutes. Yeah, then... I don't remember the the time length of time, but yeah, it's he not very long. he because I remember because he keeps consciously keeping track of how long because he has to finish in a thing that he needed to do to protect somebody else or something and so he's right, like right. I don't have enough time I don't have enough time you know but the the car- right. the cartoon one that I that I watched his pendant would start off as blue um, and as he got beat up it would turn from yellow to red and every time it happened the narrator would come on and remind you that when his pendant turns from blue to yellow to red and then starts to flash he is running out of energy and then, mm-hmm. and then every time that would happen he would he would break out of whatever was injuring him because it never stayed on yellow it went from blue to yellow and in the middle of the the narration and then it would turn to red and then he would break out of whatever he was doing and use his superpower and defeat the bad guy and run out of time and turn back into a dude and like that's how it always happened yeah well that's typical cartoon. <laughs> but <laughs> that's typical animation cartoon kids things i mean they got to make it dramatic right right so. um but you know some of some of my favorite cartoons, and I think a lot of people's favorite cartoons were the continuity-based ones that lead into more modern cartoons, so right. like Gargoyles or yeah, well, or like, Batman the Animated Series or Batman Beyond, where you 
You get keep, evolution yeah, in, yeah. in in cartoons. And right, right. Itself. I mean, you I know, think like, X-Men was one of the first ones I can remember to do it. Yeah. Like, cuz I remember the, we used to have to watch big ones. Yeah, we used to have to watch X-Men every week and hope it's a new episode, not a rerun. Mm-hmm. And like I never paid attention to when seasons were back then like yeah, oh the beginning of the season well, and is the thing here. is I think it's cartoon seasons are weird. Right. Yeah. Because definitely. if you if you look at if you look at Gargoyles is a really good example of that. So when they got approved for the first season, their first season was like 12 episodes long or something. Right. And then they got approved for a second season, which is like fifty episodes long. Right, it's always like that. Like the first, the first uh, season of, of Yu Gi Oh is like fifty episodes long. Right, because like when that. they when they do cartoons, which is one of the big differences between cartoons and anime generally, because animes are usually shorter. Right, but that's the reason why some of the the crossover well, ones are weird. It's also so like really Yu Gi Oh's first season is like fifty episodes long, but animes are usually topped off at like between twelve and. 24 episodes well yeah and like the way that like anime the way that they break down seasons in in like japan is by arc like by when a when a certain story is finished even if like there's a whole story that's still continuing a lot lot, lot of the time they don't stop they just they just say this is the new season you could you could turn on netflix or hulu right now and watch an anime and like you know they'll say season one is is twenty four episodes, but you get twelve season twelve episodes in, and then episode thirteen starts. It's a new intro, yeah. new outro. You know yeah. that's anime and, and or Japanese version of okay. The I first season's the over. The first the first big introduction of that over here was Dragon Ball Z. Because yeah, exactly. you don't break Dragon Ball Z up by season necessarily. You break it up break by it arc. By arc, and the right. arcs are different lengths. Yeah, right. So like the first arc, you know the Saiyan arc. Um, is like, like forty episodes. Yeah, long. and then and then you know the Namek arc is like a hundred episodes or something <laughs> stupid. Yeah, it's you know? ridiculous. It, it's, so that's like three seasons for just while they're trying to find the Dragon Balls on Namek. Right, but it's it's just it that's considered one season because that was the, the that was within that arc. Right. Yeah, but the <coughs> thing about like Yu Gi Oh and Pokemon is that those are used to sell things here. That's right. what, why they're like that. Right. That's why they don't really focus and so much on, on seasons like, at all with Yu- stuff Yu- like Yu-Gi-Oh, that. Yu-Gi-Oh, I don't know how they break up their seasons. Pokemon, they break up their seasons based on the games. Right. So, when the new game comes out, the old the old series starts to wrap, and you start to get a new series. Right. Because, I mean... Well, the, yeah... They, Marshall was watching Sun and Moon the last... Yesterday and part of today. Right. He was watching Sun and Moon. I'm like, I didn't even know that was out. The last I remember was XYZ and... Yeah... Well, well like, Sun and Moon had had been out, and Sun and Moon was actually a, a kind of a weird one because it came out almost at the exact same time that the Sun and Moon games did, right. which is not really what you're used to in the Pokemon usually uh, the series. The anime follows yeah. a little bit after. Yeah, usually the anime takes a little bit longer, but Sun and Moon is continuing a little bit longer than I'm used to seeing Pokemon series well, continue. Uh, X and Y did that too, actually, if I remember correctly. That, that's because X, remember... X and Y were excessively popular. Oh yeah, that's one of the best. Ones that they've done in in a long time, it's like thick. series, like cartoons, series wise, in in the anime and in the games, Black both and both were on. insanely popular. Considering yeah. X, in, in Pokemon in, terms, in general, in how terms popular of, it uh, in terms is. of the the Pokemon anime, my some of my favorite ones were X and Y and Diamond and Pearl. Yeah, um, and a lot of people feel like that. And the, my least favorite ones were like Black and White, which was weird because those were some of my favorite games. It's just they did not do that show very well. It seems like I black and white lasted a really long time, though. That's just because that's just because it's bad. It makes it feel like it lasts a really long time. <laughs> I feel like the games aren't very good, though. I love those. I, games. I love black and white. I did not enjoy the. I I really I really did like black and white, but I didn't like the show. I did, I thought the show was really bad. I definitely yeah, I didn't, didn't like the side characters in the show very much at all. I, I, I didn't yeah, play. Really I was very, like, because Marshall was watching Black and White and X and Y at the same time, and I'm just like, oh, this is maddening, because I really liked X and Y, but I did not like Black and White whatsoever. So, like, we were going back and forth, and I'm like, man, this is getting annoying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyways... Anyway, I want to talk about Batman and, yeah. and Batman Beyond. And, and well, for me, that was the first show, like, like continuity-wise, that I remember absolutely being hooked on as a kid, because Batman was like the first show that I think I really watched, other than like Looney Tunes and crap. So like people that. that people that know me 
know me well enough that you're not the biggest. I'm Batman not the fan. hugest Batman fan. I think he's and everyone's little, entitled to be wrong. A little over. <laughs> I, I like Superman, biggest. and I get why people hate Superman. I get <coughs> it, but again, it's not really the Superman okay. as a character I, for me. Hold I, on, it's not really the Superman as a character for me. It's his morality behind what he does. Right. It, it's always intrigued me about his like I want to do good I want to save this I want to do that it was he, he never used his powers overly aggressive like ever except well, for back then you definitely not right you know. but this animated series the Batman animated series I watched almost in, in its entirety yeah. because of how good it was I think the uh, presentation of it is what made it stand apart the way they presented Batman right was what made it stand apart from because it was a little darker. It, it, it made it. It made me interested in Batman again because the as much as we all love the old uh, the old Batman TV show with uh, Adam West, Adam West, and, and, yeah. and Burt Ward, Burt Ward. As much as we all love that, because I know we all love that old cheesiness. I do actually. So it was a very. <laughs> it's a very like. Kid friendly, like extra camp, and yeah, super campy and hokey, crap, right? The super what... hokey, but we all liked it growing <coughs> up. It's fine, but it was what this Batman did, the animated series did, was it darkened Batman to the way it should right. be. It kind of it wasn't too dark. The Dark Knight. It wasn't too way. dark that kids couldn't watch it, well, but it was baby. dark enough <laughs> to show that to show that Batman. <coughs> Is a dark character. It was. It was also revolutionary in terms of animation, in in the way that it conveyed a lot of ideas and things. Because if you notice the the way that the show is set up, it's almost set up like a like a drama, like a play, mm-hmm. right? So you have the intro. the The first few seasons of the intro didn't have the word Batman in it anywhere. Right? right, you don't you don't see the word Batman. So, you, like, unless you know who Batman is, you don't know what it's about. You just see this guy beating people up. But everyone who watched it knew who it was about, right? Because it was like, Batman. Batman was an iconic character, and just seeing that intro, you know what the show is is going to be. And then you would go into that title card, that still frame title card with the 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 you know the dramatized title and the the nice like painting that they would do of, of something and then they would move into the story and dialogue in a lot of those episodes was very, very short. Like, it was, there wasn't a whole lot of dialogue in a lot of the episodes. It was done almost like a like an old school sort of noir silent film Whoa, type. Yeah, right? 100%. That's right. a I great mean, vibe to put shoot, on it. Even the movies it was, it was that very, they created. It was, very big on, it was very big on show and don't tell. Yeah, even yeah. the movies they created from that animated series, even now to this day, I love some of those movies that DC created through the Batman animated series using Ma- the same Mas- style. Mask of, Mask of the Phantasm. Oh, oh my gosh, yeah. Mask of the Phantasm! Such a spectacular movie. I mean, even like I don't think I've ever seen a bad animated movie from that. From you know that stemmed from this. Any every single one. There wasn't one that I. I hate it. Not a direct Batman correlation one. There have been other ones from like the Justice League side and that you didn't like. Though. That I wasn't a big fan of. Like my big ones are like the Death of Superman type ones. Right. Um, they did do a Superman Doomsday one that I I was like, oh, this is going to be really good. Maybe they'll actually do a good version of the Death of Superman. They didn't, but then yeah, again, ju- they Justice, also Justice League's. Doomsday was really, really bad. Um, they also can't do it the way the comic books did because there isn't enough character building to run it the way the comic book did. Because, right. I mean, if you really look at the a lot, comic A lot of the books, Justice League that was in the comic book at the time are not the Justice League that people recognize. Correct. Correct. Yeah, like, no. so they, had, they weren't just yeah. Justice League. They were called the JLA. So at yeah. a certain point, Justice yeah, League like, went like, from... The Booster big and five, Guy Gardner and Blue Beetle. And yeah, yeah, they went from the big five to the Justice League Unlimited, which we all know that is an animated series, also. Right. <clears throat> so the Justice League Unlimited just basically brought in all superheroes from around the world, and they put them in the teams. Right. And well, it, the JLA, which is a lot of people don't understand, is the Justice League of America. Started out as the big five, you know, Superman. Yeah, but it Batman, grew well beyond but that. But they. 
they then just split up the Justice League of America into sections so that well, each group had their own area. That or was whatever. that was sort of a, a weird time in comics because it was it uh, was the they they went from using Justice League to tell stories about their popular characters to trying to take their less popular characters and give them something that would give them some spotlight to try and right. make them into more mainstream so, characters. Yeah, bring which it is out. which is exactly what the Avengers did in, on the Marvel side. Right. That's what that's what Avengers was for. It was to take their their characters that and it's hard to believe these days, but it was characters that were unpopular. It was the Iron Man that no one liked. It was <laughs> Hulk, no one liked him. Captain America, no one liked him. At the time, these were all very unpopular characters that they that just was, needed yeah. something to do with. Right. right. And Justice League started off as their popular characters and morphed into that sort of same style to try and launch some of their, their lesser known characters. It didn't work out the same on the DC end as it did on the Marvel end. Yeah, because it's right. kind well, of the opposite of each other. DC started to fade out a little bit. Hence the reason why they did what they did with their two main characters, like right at the same time. I mean, mm-hmm. Batman got his back broken and Superman died probably within the same year. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Bad Nightfall, what, Nightfall and the Death of Superman happened in the same year. And I have... Yeah. I had a good chunk what, what of that, Nightfall. was 93? <sighs> Something like that, yeah. I mean, I... Yeah. I wasn't... Yeah, because it was before I... I'm pretty, like I'm pretty, right sure, Black Bag, I'm pretty sure Black Bag came out in 93. Yeah, it was before I started really working, so it was probably when I was 14 or so, so... It was... I was younger when they came out. I did have the Black Bag Superman. Yeah. I had it in the Black Bag. I had the White Bag Superman, which if you guys don't know what the White Bag is, that's the return of Superman. But I had a good chunk of Nightfall... Even though I wasn't a huge Batman fan, but Nightfall was he was a big thing, and Nightfall was like twenty something issues of a comic book series. Yeah. And if you if you get the collected, it is a thick, thick volume. Yeah. So I mean, it was big, and and it started. What most people don't understand is that Batman had his back broken in a in issue eleven of Nightfall, mm. and there was that means there was ten issues of stuff that happens to Batman before Bane gets a hold of him. Right. So, I mean, it's just one of those things. But, I mean, Batman, back to the animated series of Batman. Mm. Batman the Animated Series did a very big thing, and that brought comic books to life. I yeah, think it, it, and it, it also extended out and basically made its entire an entire universe. You know, yeah. they, they stemmed off Superman from it. They stemmed off Justice League from it. They right. uh, Static Shock. Is one that people forget. Oh, Static oh, yeah. Shock. How, oh, man, oh, how did we forget to talk about Static Shock? Such a great series. It's so it's kind of, obscure. It's that, obscure and a little hokey, uh, even. But, but here's, here's, here's the thing. Very well done. You don't, you don't oh, just yeah. get Static Shock off of that. You also <coughs> get Batman Beyond and Zeta. And no one remembers Zeta. Um, Zeta was it, was... it was a, a robot that was in one episode of Batman Beyond. Mm-hmm. And they ended up changing the robot's... Look completely. So instead of like a weird triangle head, he had like an actual like human head. I vaguely and, remember and that. And they 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 gave him his own series. It lasted like two seasons. Huh? Yeah. I vaguely remember that. Yeah, but Static Shock, Batman Beyond, well, the Batman the animated series, I always like went very long. I mean, because there was a couple different. It like had its own little, like ups and downs with that, where it went from. Batman with Robin to Batman with no Robin back to Batman with they, the Robin. Right, Teen, Teen Titans. Yeah, yeah Teen they Titans. They even went the whole Timothy Drake story in Batman yeah. animated series. They did a couple. Technically, Teen Titans is not within the same continuity, but they advertised it using um, Static Shock, the episode where Static meets Batman, uh, and he asks where Robin is, and he's like, he's with the Titans. Teen Titans as a show wasn't on yet, but it was coming out, and they used that instance to, to help out. advertise for the show, even though they weren't in the same universe. Right. right. And the thing is, is like even in the Batman the animated series, they did do the full stories of all the Robins. It wasn't well, just one Robin, but yeah. it was a couple different Robins, and then it even it was, did it a was, small was, section when he didn't have Robin. It was it was two Robins. They did they did Dick. Yeah, they did, um, and they shape. they did his transformation into Nightwing, Nightwing. which they kind of gloss over. Uh, they do do a couple flashback episodes that show them getting into a fight and Dick leaving. Um, and then they do 
Tim Drake, which they combined the comic book Tim Drake with Jason Todd, so they became one character. Right. right. Um, so instead of it being Tim Drake who lives with his parents and becomes a, a great detective by figuring out who Batman is, they did Tim Drake as Jason Todd living on the streets as an orphan, right. trying to steal tires off the Batmobile. They mixed the, <laughs> they mixed it together. They, Which they, was they fine. mixed they mixed them together. Uh, they give they give Tim Drake. Jason's origin, but Tim Drake's personality, right. which was a more popular personality because no one liked Jason. <laughs> well, it was, just, and the thing about Jason was, is I think that I've I've heard a, an interview about about Jason that they kind of knew Jason wasn't going to make it because the second they got rid of Dick and that Robin, they were like, oh, you can't replace. Yeah. So they kind of had an idea that they were going to do what they were going to do with Jason. Anyway. Well, kind of. It was it was a it was a sort of weird situation because that whole. Uh, and, uh, in case you don't know, the way they did uh, Robin's death, a death in the family, which right. was when Jason Todd got killed by the Joker and stayed dead for like twenty years or something. Right. Um, well, yeah. The Red Hood is. He is. He's back okay. now, but he was dead for like twenty okay. years. Oh yeah. He um, for a while. So he died in what? Uh, Eighty nine, ninety. Right. Mm-hmm. He died. He died not very long after Barbara got paralyzed. So not very long after the Killing Joke. Right. Okay. Um, so Jason got killed by the Joker, but the way they they decide on it, they didn't write the story to be that way intentionally. They wrote it as sort of a he could live or he could die, and they ran a phone poll where you had to call in using the 800 number that and, you paid and for tell them what you and, and, to and one number was for keep him alive and the other number was for kill him and they ended up finding out years later that they that, that someone had set up an automated calling system that just called kill him over and over and over again and kill only won by like a couple hundred votes so there it, was a lot of people that were still voting for yeah him so to live. there were a lot of people voting for him to live and they think that this one person may have tipped the scale and and caused him to die but they didn't find that out for a while um right? so they ended up printing the Fictional one where he bird. dies and he stayed <laughs> dead for you know like 20 years until he comes back and right. he initially comes back in hush right um but he pretends to be clayface uh and then a little while after that, they do Under the Hood, which is him coming back as Red Hood and being like, "No, that was actually me. Me and me and Clayface swapped when we went behind this building." Um, so, but that was that's a whole different thing. Yeah, uh, I mean, I always liked. Uh, it didn't take me long to notice, even as a kid, like because I, you know, they had this the Superman and the Batman animated series right. at the same time for me, yeah, and I was did. I was definitely watching them both. Yeah, into them both. For me, it was just a matter of, like, this is great content either way. Yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, at an early age, I didn't really have my opinions about either character that I have now. Uh, mm-hmm. But, like, they, they really painted it. For me, not not being, like, a, a comic book prior knowledge person, like, they painted the differences between the two characters really well in the shows. Like, you never really see Superman out at nighttime, and you never see Batman out in daytime, yeah. you know, like... Anytime that there's stuff going on in the Batman series, it's like dark and, you know, he's out there being Batman at night and, and all this. And, like, yeah. that was a huge part of, like, the, the environment that they set. Well, it, it, the way, the way they, they basically set it up in the comic and in the show is during the day, Batman is Bruce Wayne. That's when he goes out and does his Bruce Wayne thing. That's when he right. goes out and he sets up foundations and he yeah. finds clues using his... his billionaire yeah, yeah. guys and and things like that that's when he you know he does all this charity work and you know that that's when he he, he bees a normal person bees bees a normal normal person. Person. and and then at night he becomes batman and he goes and he fights crime and then at some point in time presumably he sleeps right um that's why i'm always, I'm always <laughs> trying to figure that out growing up it's like it's like if he's batman all night long and then he's bruce wayne all day long when the f does he sleep so, well, like, so actually, I love okay. There, there's, there's a weird explanation for that. Someone, someone discovered a weird sleep schedule that he could be on, where he only has to sleep for around an hour and a half a day. But it takes, it takes like a year and a half to put yourself on this weird sleep schedule. Oh, I could believe it. Batman, and though, yeah, that means. and so there, there is evidence for it in some of the, the other world comics, like the Elseworld stuff. Like whatever happened to the Cape Crusader, where he he literally like will be in the Batcave and is like, I need sleep, and he'll set an egg timer for fifteen minutes to wake him up. 
in 15 minutes. Power nap and all that. Right. Power nap. Just and that's, 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 part, that's part of the sleep naps, schedule good. is you, you set your, you basically trick your body into going into REM sleep immediately and you only have to sleep for around 15 to 20 minutes at a time and you do it three or four times a day. Right. Uh, and if you're, always wondering I mean, why if you're sleeping for like 15 minutes, your body gets at least nine minutes of REM sleep. Unless you can absolutely do it just fucking right there. Yeah. yeah. But I was wondering why Batman was irritable. Sleep deprivation. But <laughs> I love, for me, so um, seeing that difference even as a kid that I just talked about between, you know, the animated Superman and Batman. Like, that's kind of like, okay, Superman and Batman, neither of them are on, like, my top five favorite superhero lists or even really come close. But... They are both the, on mine. The Batman animated series kind of like set up uh set the standard set the bar for like the kind of hero that i was gonna like be more inclined to like yeah so like the ground level uh, yeah yeah it's kind of like where i where i began because batman was kind of like the first hero that i really came into interaction with of like knowing what a superhero is instead of just like oh this guy just beats up other guys and i like that stuff yeah you know, because that's kind of how the X Men was for me. Um, I did watch the X Men animated series, The Uncanny, but like for me, it was kind of just like these guys have cool powers and they're like fighting each other raw. Yeah. You know. So I think I think we should head out of the comic book related cartoons. Definitely, because this is uh, this is a huge thing that yeah. I, didn't think we I mean, there was there was a lot of bullet points I wanted to hit in this episode, but we kind of got off in our own little world of our favorite. Car- Cartoons, which is fine because that's what it's, this it's whole weird, thing is about. I, I, I wanted to go off on a giant tangent about the gargoyles. That's where I planned on heading yeah. this when we first started. And I mean, we hit DC, and we hit we hit DC, and uh, yeah, kind of kind of ran with sort, it. Sort of a wall. For so me. I mean, so. something else growing up for me, I don't know about as much for you guys was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, the original series, Teenage Mutant, not the new computer animated stuff that they have out now. I mean, the originals with with. Right. Rocksteady and Bebop and and uh, I had my phase. The brain on dude in that big weird yeah. robot body. Crank. I was more of a fan of the merchandise of it. Uh, you know, having them included. Everyone, in like my, everyone was. In my toys like was, and your, stuff was the action figures. Kind of, the of more of where I loved yeah. uh, Ninja Turtles, but like yeah, it's it, more so my brother was huge in the Ninja it's, Turtles. It's weird because the way the way that TMNT sort of comes about, you have the comic, right? Which the comic series as a whole is not terribly long. No. Um, yeah, and they think the way it's like, they, yeah, yeah like, they, they reprint it every every couple of years. That's how they keep it going. Yeah. They just reprint the same issues yeah. or in like special editions or colored editions or because the original was in black and black white. And and white. You, the only way you could tell the turtles apart was by their weapons. Right. And they have no different personalities. They're all just angry turtles. Yep. That, yep. I um, do remember watching the angry, angry, murderous turtles. <laughs> well, didn't, do... we, didn't we talk about how Michelangelo and Raphael were like indistinguishable? So I was, I was, I was getting the right way at first. So you have, you have in the in the the original comic, their first villain is Shredder, and they murder the hell out of him. Um, and then that got popular enough. That was in the first issue, right? Something like that, yeah. Uh, but they murder the hell out of him, uh, and then someone, uh, some toy person looked at it and was just like this these could make good toys so they started making the toys and they set up uh, a deal and there was like hey these toys could use some good advertisement let's make a show out of it well, so they made the show and they gave the turtles different colors different personalities yeah um, give the people out there a little bit more in-depth stuff there is an episode of the toys that made us on the teenage mutant ninja turtles and it oh, goes yeah. through the whole Huge. story of how these two comic book guys were in their own house. They rented a house together and built this. Accidentally made this series, this and comic I do, book. I do have, I do have some stuff against the creators of TMNT because I do know someone who was seriously into uh, making comics and was starting to get a, a foot in the door in the industry. And one of his comics did get stolen by. One of the creators of Teenage Mutant yeah, Ninja Turtles. Yeah, because if you watch the, the, <laughs> the Toys That Made Us, you, you know that the two creators had a very indifferent way of how they wanted to run the 
the turtles yeah. later on in the in the in the lifespan of what the turtles. But that's were. that's so the that's the main splitting. that's the main reason why the comic doesn't do anything. Right. So. Um. But I just sort of wanted to get into like how they how they end up getting different personalities, and it's mostly from uh, the original cartoon. But Michelangelo and Raphael were basically the same person. If you go back and watch them, they're basically the same person. And in the first live action movie is when they gave Raphael that that signature bad boy personality that yeah, everyone yeah, knows him like for. But it didn't it didn't show up until then. So right. All right. So as much as I want to continue on in this episode about talking about cartoons and stuff like that, I think our best bet is because of how much information we want to put out, we'll probably put it into two episodes. So we're gonna go ahead and end the first one here. Um, we'll add some recommendations at the end of the next episode. You, you don't want to do a couple for this one? Give some older recommendations. Older, older recommendations. Older recommendations. Or maybe DC, if you want to go that route. So that was mostly I had a recommendation that I had thought of earlier, but I completely spaced on it, and I don't remember what it was. Well, I mean, my, my recommendation for some of the older stuff is actually something we kind of glossed over, um, and it's Gargoyles. Watch Gargoyles. Yeah, we'll discuss Gargoyles a little bit at the beginning of the next Episode. At least, at least a little bit. Um, Devin, anything? I can't remember what it was, and now I'm kind of like frustrated with myself because it was a good one too. I know it was. So, okay, yeah, so watch that. We were talking about it at the beginning, but yeah. It's all good. So my recommendation is this: if you can find it, and I want to say you have to find it because if you've never seen it, it is a spectacular movie with a spectacular soundtrack. Is the original. Transformers animated movie. The Death of Optimus Prime? The one where Optimus dies, yeah. Um, the soundtrack behind that was... There's Van a lot Halen. of Van Halen in that. And mm. I'm a huge Van Halen fan. So, if you guys can find a way to watch it, and it's so hard to find nowadays, but it's it's Transformers the movie. Right, it, it's been out on DVD. Uh, I don't know if it ended up making Blu-ray. I think it did, but I mean, I, I I own it on DVD. I mean, I have ways to find it if I really need to. But for those of you who don't have, you know, means to find it, means to find it, just do your best because I'll tell you right now, that is such a great movie. It's a okay. little older. So, it has a lot of good stuff to it, and the animation is back. Harrison, you got a recommendation? Uh, I remembered mine, by the way. I'd recommend the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. That's a good show. That is a good show. Yeah, we it's talked about that a little bit on that other podcast. On the other, the other yeah. one of the other episodes. That, that, that I remember really my funny. recommendation. All right, what was it? Watch Jackie Chan Adventures. Oh hell yeah, hell yeah! That Jackie was one Chan of the Adventures. most enjoyable cartoons. Seriously, about Jackie Chan Adventures. In a while. As as like funny as it can be, and it, how it's got a good story. It does it's have got, a very good story. It has, it has a child. It has a child character in it that isn't super annoying, which is and it, actually. We didn't get into Darkwing Duck either, but that also has a child character that that is very enjoyable to watch. It's right. it's my weird. my favorite character was always Uncle from uh, Jackie Chan Adventures because yeah. yeah. he was very quotable. He said, One more thing, Hi -ya. Oh, okay. yeah. All right, so recommendations in. We're gonna go ahead and end this episode, and we'll uh, continue talking about cartoons in the next one. We'll catch you guys later. Like, Deuces. comment, subscribe, and uh, keep a lookout for part two. Yeah.